Today's talk is about black and white or monochrome. Monochrome is where we have our image with our whites and another colour giving us our contrast to form the image. Black and white is just a special case of monochrome which we've become so used to from our history of silver based processes where the silver produces a black image. With this process we can go to something that has no mid greys, it is if you like black or white, or we could go to something that is high key where it is nearly all white, low key where it is nearly all black, we could go to a toned system where we have our classical sepia with the brown tones or a sienna type effect where we have our cyan tones in there or we could be looking purely at a normal black and white where we have a range of tones stretching from our blacks, deep blacks through the greys right up to our white. Working in black and white or monochrome does not limit our photography. We have a full range of processing etc that we are used to. In fact taking the colour out of some images where the colours clash, draw our attention away etc can enhance the image. So don't be afraid of black and white and use the skills that we've built up over a range of photographic options and apply them to black and white and you can end up with some fantastic images. Here's the first image we're going to look at. This is straight out of the camera, the black and white JPEG that the camera produced. Uh, perhaps of concern would be these really bright areas here that were burning out just about and a little hole there and we're losing detail in some of the gravel areas here and mm, yeah, other areas are okay I guess so let's move on because this camera was set to record RAW as well as JPEG and then the camera settings were black and white but when we go and look at the RAW here's our RAW image it's in colour because it's the sensor and what happens when you set the camera to black and white is it throws out the colour information and just records black and white in the JPEG but the raw image is still has all the sensor detail so it's got all the colour and everything in it so if we want to convert this to black and white the quick and easy way is just drop off saturation take your colour out and we have a look at it and we have a look at what the camera produced and they're just about identical so largely the camera has just dropped the colour out same as desaturating so what other options do we have? We'll reset that on most advanced packages there is a black and white uh, adjustment setting so when we click black and white it looks very familiar go back and again it is desaturated almost the same as out of the camera virtually indistinguishable but we've got all these adjustments here so the sorts of things we can do are the trees are green and they've also got some yellow in them so if we wind up there we can see that the trees as we wind it up get lighter and again if we wind up the yellow the trees are getting lighter so we've actually now made the trees noticeably lighter from our black and white out of the camera we've now got more detail in the trees the sky is blue and cyan so if we wind our blue back you can see we start to get some detail in the leaves of the trees and if we take our cyan down again you can see we've got more detail up in these tree areas 
so if we come back to here we've got more detail in amongst those leaves so you can see that by adjusting these we can control parts uh, if we play with red we can affect what's happening in the shadows we can make the shadow area darker or lighter I think I'll light them a bit darker so now if we go back so we've now got a bit more oomph in those shadows magenta the only thing I've noticed magenta affecting is in the background we have a, an object there and if we go back to the before view it's a red car in the distance the interesting thing is once you spot that red car red contrasts with the greens and the blues so it actually stands out so going to black and white gets rid of the problem of that red car standing out and you know, do you want it light or dark Whoop, sorry uh, magenta is our control there and if we take magenta up we can compensate a little bit for the fact that we've taken the red down to impact these now you can see we just got a little little more in the leaves uh, a bit more detail in the leaves and a little bit more intensity in the shadow areas so we've done that just with enabling our colors the interesting thing is if we desaturate it we go back to what we had originally and if we bring those back you can see that I might have gone a bit too hard with the blues So you can see the effects. Uh, yeah, if you look here, the grass and things there, turn that off, and they're getting more detail in the shadows, uh, etc. Now, because we're using a raw, we actually have detail in these light areas, and we can wind back the whites, and we probably need the highlights a bit as well. You can see we can pick up more detail in this footpath, in the people, and in the trees there. And we could have anyhow, and if we add a bit of a vignette onto that as well, maybe even lighten it a fraction with a heavier vignette. Too far, I think. It's always a bit of a... So now we end up with quite a different photo with much more impact. We've got some shadow in the sky in behind the trees, which we didn't hear, that's virtually bleached out. We've got more shadow or more detail in the path. And with that slight vignette, we've brought our focus into the people walking along this nice serpentine path. So out of the camera, and by taking a RAW and doing our own black and white conversion and adjusting some of the sliders to suit, uh, we end up with a much more prominent black and white photo. Whether you like this photo or not, it's up to you. Uh, what I was looking at was this nice serpentine path and the highlights and the shadows and probably a little bit of clarity uh, that to me was what I would be looking for for a black and white in there which I feel is significantly better
than what you would get out of the camera and what you could do with that image. Now I'm going to choose another image and we'll have a look a bit more at what some of those colour sliders can do for us. Just got to find out where I am. That is the image we wanted. So this image, we've got some darkish foliage. Not surprised, it was taken around midday at Central Park in Malvern. Uh, what I'm looking at here is the sky and these clouds in the sky. So if we do our classic desaturation, remember this is the, s the image you get out of the camera. We've got dark, not all that uh, attractive foreground and the sky are s very subtle shades of grey, it's there but it doesn't do a great deal for me. So we'll turn that back to normal, go off to our colour. Oh, you can see that uh, we'll just do some resets on that. Now, red, if we go back and have a look at our colour image, we've got this scoria which has got reds in it. So our red slider affects the scoria type area. We know typically our leaves will be yellow and greens and we want to lighten those up a bit. And our sky is cyans and blues. Interesting in this one, magenta, I cannot see anything change. So magenta, there virtually isn't any in this image. Okay, now the sky, we can bring down the cyan and the, ooh, the blue. Uh, and then all of a sudden, those clouds really pop. And that is what this photograph is all about. So if we go back, if we desaturate, all those colours that our black and white converter were working on get removed and we just go back to the normal black and white as you would have got in camera. So that's the camera black and white and by using our black and white adjustment controls in your processor that's the image you can get out of it. Totally different image. So much more power. So that's why run raw uh, try not to use the black and white just in the camera use raw and you can bring it out this is like using a filter on the front of a, a black and white film camera and uh, there are a whole lot of orange filters and red filters and a range of filters you could buy and it's to try and produce this same effect in camera OK then, we've had a look at this and this, uh, and this is Capture One, so what do others do? Um, I'll have a look at Affinity Photo, it's similar to Photoshop. Uh, so I've set it up, so we're on our layer which I'll call Desaturate, so we'll bring up our uh, got to remember which control it is now. I don't use this package that often. Uh, anyway, is it HSL? Yep, saturation. That'll do us. So, there's our image desaturated now we can probably if I can work out how to do it 
group those and all we've done is now put them under one heading so we can turn them on and off quickly so simple desaturation and dark foliage poor contrast in the sky doesn't do much for me so we'll turn the top layer on and I'll make sure that one's off and we'll go to our colour mixer so come down here black and white that's what we want we've got our colour mixing profiles and if you think about what we did before we reduced our blue and our cyan down to give us our nice sky we brought our red up to bring our scoria area up and we brought our yellows and greens up to try and bring back a bit of detail in there now maybe I don't want to go quite that far with the uh, it's always the thing you know, do you make your sky really dark so the clouds absolutely pop or do you leave a, you know how much detail do you leave in them want a bit more in that for me that'll do right so again I think I'll group these so I can turn them on and off again so there was our original and the sky is not too bad but once you bring that pop in that's there uh, that's the straight out of the camera conversion what you would get there is simply by desaturating and uh, that's what you get with a colour mixer and just look at how much that the difference between that which is sort of flat and you lose the clouds you hit that and the clouds are sitting there you've got much better luminosity balance between the sky and the bushes that's the shot uh, and these adjustments that we're talking about are available in many pa uh, packages certainly capture one lightroom uh, well the, the adobe suite um, affinity uh, and let's have a look at the freeware gimp and here's our thing turn off we'll go to a layer and we'll just do a yes most of our things are in color hue and saturation so we'll just take our saturation desaturate ah, excuse me I'll just do it with the saturation control it helps if I go OK rather than cancel so again as we've had before so we'll go to our, mic our next level which we've called mixer colors now desaturate we've got a mono mixer there or in components we've got a mono mixer it's the same tool so I click this this one looks a lot different we've only got three because this package works with RGB so they don't have the sliders for the magenta and cyan and yellow so what can we do in here but we still have adjustments on the individual colour now we can adjust them but then they tend to affect everything uh, but we can do a preserve luminosity and it tries to keep the brightness at a similar level now our green we want to bring up bring up our bushes and we might want to take the red down we 
which I think is similar to giving us more yellow. Don't quote me on that, but it's certainly helping lift those bushes. And we want to bring the sky. Ooh down so I've taken something a bit too far <laughs> there we are I've pushed that one too far so the controls are here they're just not quite as easy to use as they were in the other package they interact a lot more so it's not quite as easy to adjust I'll take the, I'm happier with that being up there not quite as easy to adjust See, I'm having fun getting this one perhaps where I want it. Because looking at the sky, the, the red channel is in fact affecting the mistiness that's giving us a uh, patterning in the sky, uh, and the blue is affecting that, that the density of that overall density of it. And we've taken our Greens up. Quite a long way. So, we'll call it quits at that. Not as easy to adjust. But again, we've certainly gone a long way from what would have been out of the camera as a black and white image with our simple desaturation to using a colour mixer approach where we've now got this nice moody sky coming back in and the trees I think I preferred that one a bit better having that ex those extra controls has given us a bit finer and of course the uh, capture one is in many ways very similar so that's uh, I think one of the better demonstrations of why uh, an in-processor colour mixer conversion to black and white has a lot more power than anything you can do in the camera. So uh, if I go back to our there, we'll just turn that lot off that's what our in-camera would have looked like and that's what our colour mixer looks like just so much better if we go back to here in-camera colour mixer black and white conversion and it's just like being able to adjust the filters on the lens of the black and white camera but in this case we're doing it after the event and you can see you can use it to enhance detail in the sky and also modify what's happening in the foreground you can see here I'm getting more into the vegetation uh, as well as bringing out the detail in the sky by setting those adjusters as they are so that's why we want to process raw and not do it in the camera if we have uh, a box full of filters working in the camera
probably we can get nice results. And we also have to know how those filters work to be able to apply them to get the results we want. Where our digital system being able to do it in RAW is just uh, so much easier and we can get the impact that we want straight off. So that will do for the processes. I think I've conveyed what I wanted to there.